then that theory, you know, won't ever have a chance to see the light of day. But that theory doesn't mean it's not real. It's real to those people that see through that, that reality tunnel. So I think that, you know, skeptics, they have blinders on in a sense, and they limit themselves. It's a shame that they do. But, I mean, I can step into any perspective and see what they're seeing in a sense because, you know, it's, it is all about perception. It's all about how you view the world, and everyone has a different view. There, are, there's, there is no meaning for the word normal yet we all like to throw it around like that's not normal that's abnormal that's paranormal that's you know whatever and they they don't have a a uh you know if you look at the even the meaning of the word normal it just says something regular and you're like what's regular you look at the meaning for regular and it will say normal and it'll point back at each other and and it just basically is a flex of an opinion a flex of an ego a flex of what people think is uh important Yeah, that, that does make a lot of sense, actually. Okay, um, back to the questions. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What have you had the most success with, like, power-wise during lucid dreams? Like, i.e. flying and fireballs and stuff like that? Um, I mean, it's progressed beyond, like, trivial... I don't want to say trivial things, because it will... Uh, shit, my phone's going to ring. Can you pause it really quick? It'll be yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, we're back. And now back to that last question. I believe it was, what have you had the most success with, like, power-wise, during Lucid's? Oh, sorry for that interruption. Anyway, uh, yeah, what uh, I was saying before reality rudely interrupted me um, was, you know, I don't want to call it trivial, but uh, those, those kind of like uh, powers and whatnot. Occasionally I enjoy like destruction of like matter, making it uh, kind of uh, breaking things apart into its like corporeal form and seeing things as like liquid almost and breaking it down into kind of like this everything down to this base that flows around you and in this kind of like uh like underlying sea of connectivity i don't it's hard to explain but that, that's kind of where i'm at now i don't really interact with people when i go lucid i just kind of like destroy the the matter or seeming matter around me and kind of make it flow around me in different kind of like uh, waves. Hmm. And then I like string different thoughts together and make these huge like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's almost like big bangs or universes out of these thoughts. It's kind of strange. It's, it's hard to put into words because the actual ideas are, are beyond like, just one word. I know that sounds kind of like uh, cliche, but it's actually, it's just like a, an image in my head right now that I can't really express other than say it's literally like a big bang of, 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 of a thought. Wow. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if anyone would believe me, but, uh, you know, there's no way to, you know, prove what you're seeing regardless so it's uh it's pretty intense so yeah i could see how that would get pretty intense um okay what was your favorite lucid dream or a few of your favorites um well the thing that was my favorite was kind of also the reason I joined Dream Views. I was kind of looking if you look at my history and try to see the first thread I ever made, it actually has over about uh, 15,000 views or something like that now. And it was just a question asking about what this recurring dream I constantly had about um two moons and in the sky and this giant tidal wave was about really. And this was in uh, 2005 when I joined. 
And, uh, you know, now I'm seeing like movies like Day After Tomorrow in 2012 with that exact same theme that I've seen in my dreams. And it's fucking weird as hell because I've uh, actually seen that stuff in my dreams and the themes of like Independence Day and Day After Tomorrow and 2012. Imagine putting your hands together and, and making one big theme out of that whole thing. It's kind of like that's what I've, I've always had dreams of and they've lasted for long periods of time with very vivid memories and people I'm meeting in this dream and and every place I'm at wherever I have the dream um, it shows me where it, what, what's going to happen to that place it's kind of strange that's pretty trippy yeah so I don't know what's going to happen in 2012 necessarily but uh, definitely uh, something <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, going off of that, what do you think of 2012? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's more like a shift in consciousness or awareness. I don't like to take it literally, like the world's going to just explode. Like most people like to think most 2012 people are all about the end of the world. I don't look at it like that, but more like a, a big change in the sense of like, how we, we view ourselves and our connection to reality or what we consider reality it's going to, is going to fundamentally change everything, I think. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what that kind of change is going to bring, a positive or negative change necessarily. I think it has to do with the thoughts you hold right now care, determine how tomorrow is going to be. So it's kind of like a law of attraction type deal, but it's more like... Uh, literally like you wake up into what you feel you need to wake up into. So whatever misfortune you have is basically you drew that reality for yourself no more than you drew the dreams that you dreamed the night before. It's, it's, there is no separation, only your perception of it being separate. So both of uh, your dreams and your tomorrow are interconnected. That's that's a really cool thought, actually. Sounds a lot better than just the world exploding out of nowhere. Right. So I think it my like my name is Daniel, my actual name and you know Daniel was supposed to be somebody who, you know, told the prophetic dreams of the end of the world for King Nebuchadnezzar and uh you know he was supposed to have uh prophetic powers of seeing the future in his dreams and I've and I've had many deja vu like dreams which have lasted over two minutes and I'm able to like see everyone's movements and lines as they say them like ahead of time and I'm like wait a minute I've seen this in a dream and it's unlike a normal deja vu it kind of continues for for minutes and and it, it the only way out of it is I have to interrupt what somebody was going to say and tell them what they were going to say. And normally they're just dumbfounded because I just told them what they were going to say before they even knew they were going to say it. And then they're just like, left what? How did you, what? And I'm like, don't tell me it's weird. I already know you're going to say that. And then, then I'm like out of it afterwards. And I can finally participate in reality again instead of just observing everyone before they you know, say it. Because it's kind of scary, actually. If you have like a deja vu that lasts a long time, you can't interact with anyone. You just know what they're going to do and say. So it seems kind of like cold, actually. Reality becomes like predictable. Yeah, and you start to feel separated and not really there. Right. Like you even see yourself not interacting because you have, you're, you're outside your own body almost. It's almost like an out-of-body experience because you're experiencing everyone else's bodies and your own at the same time and it's almost like you're part of something bigger but at the same time you can't return to your individual self enough to uh, interact and, and provide the game of, of interaction. So. I definitely have a lot... I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I, I hate to... Uh, you know, it's a 